Let's start by studying the radiation coming from the sun. So we want to study the solar radiation and to to make sure that it's not that our study is not uh, contaminated by the presence of atmosphere so I'm, I'm going to study this extraterrestrial solar radiation or the solar radiation in space before this uh, before the solar radiation uh, hits the atmosphere of the earth so plotted in this chart is uh, what is called the spectral irradiance and it has the unit of watt per meter square per nanometer. So what that's plotting over here, it's plotting the intensity of light, that is watt per meter square, and it's plotting it as a function of a wavelength. So it has a unit of watt per meter square, and then as a function of wavelength, which is given plotted in the x-axis. So what we see over here is uh, is this uh, this so incoming uh, solar radiation or this uh, solar irradiance plotted as a function of a wavelength. It resembles very closely to this uh, gray curve, which is indicated as the black body spectrum or this radiation from the sun. It resembles very closely to. Uh, what you expect from a black body which is at the same temperature of the sun which is approximately you know 5800 kelvin so why is this you know why is it first of all slightly different from uh, from the ideal black body spectrum the reason is that the sun even though we approximate it uh, as a black body to a to the first order but it's not exactly a black body in fact you know the sun has a temperature of uh, approximately 12 20 or 20 million kelvin at the center of the sun and this is what causes this is what causes a nuclear fission reaction which converts hydrogen into helium and then at the surface of the sun is 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 hydrogen or is uh, is this hydrogen atom and this heat which is generated it uh, travels by convection up to the surface and then some of it is absorbed again by this hydrogen and it's finally emitted out in the form of this electromagnetic radiation from the surface of the Sun which is at the temperature of approximately 5800 Kelvin so it's it's very close to a, a, a black body radiation but it's you know those deviations that we are seeing are because of this because of these all these reactions and non ideality is going on the surface of the sun but anyway to the first order we can approximate it uh, as a black body spectrum so first question to ask is what is a black body so a black body is a body which absorbs all incoming radiation. So let's say we have this object and we, you know, we have this incoming radiation. We'll have an outgoing radiation out of this. So a black body is a body in which you have no outgoing radiation. It essentially absorbs all the radiation which is incident on it. So uh, at least to a first order approximation, the way we can describe or uh, we can approximate these uh, uh, black bodies is by assuming this cavity which is uh, opaque to, to opaque to incoming radiation so if we have this cavity and we have this small opening on the small hole in this cavity and then we make radiation incident on it so this radiation will go inside but it won't be able to come out because this this black body then is opaque to radiation so it will have a lot of this reflection inside but it will there's a very small probability that it will come out so this is a practical way in which uh, you could uh, you could uh, uh, you could you know theorize or uh, experimentally study the radiation from a black body and this is exactly how mr max planck so he studied this radiation from uh, uh, apparatus like this and he described the properties of this uh, black body radiation so I want to spend some time describing how this uh, black body radiation looks like because it has a, a large amount of implications on the efficiencies that we can get from solar cells and you know and solar energy conversion in large. So the first correct description of this black body radiation is uh, often credited to Max uh, Planck who derived this uh, around uh, 1900. 
and that's why this uh, this law is called as uh, Planck's law. And what it says is that this intensity of this uh, of this black body radiation as a function of uh, frequency of this light and as a function of uh, temperature is uh, given by this formula, where it's uh, proportional to the to the cube of this uh, frequency and it's uh, it's also dependent on that uh, frequency by this exponential term which has this uh, exponential term which has frequency as well as temperature and it's given by this uh, formula we can also rewrite this uh, formula to give this uh, give this uh, Intensity as a function of uh, wavelength as it's uh, plotted uh, as a function of wavelength uh, over here and we can uh, We can express this same formula as a function of a wavelength where it's uh, again given by This formula where it's inversely proportional to the wavelength uh, using this term and then it has uh, exponential term over here which has essentially essentially lambda term over here as well lambda as well as temperature term over here so these these relationships are what is called as uh, Planck's law and plotted here is this intensity as a function of wavelength we can also look at in terms of uh, uh, the function of a frequency which will essentially uh, increase with decreasing wavelength because this frequency you could simply write that you know velocity of light is equal to the wavelength times the frequency so if uh, wavelength increases the frequency will decrease or vice versa so when wavelength increases you can also plot this as a function of uh, frequency over here so looking at this curve there are some unique features that we see so we see that uh, we see that as you increase the temperature of the black body so the temperature is featuring in this equation over here so as you increase the temperature of the body black body what you are seeing is that the total intensity or this total uh, energy which is represented by the total area under this uh, curve so total intensity total watt per meter square this is watt per meter square per nanometer if we'll integrate it so this would be watt per meter square so this total intensity it essentially increases as you increases increase the temperature of your black body and this is kind of expected if you you know if you have a if you have a hotter body you would expect that it would have a it will emit a larger overall intensity of light in fact so we can uh, the way we can express this is we can integrate this intensity as a function of uh, frequency for all frequencies from zero to infinity and uh, then the result that we get is essentially this total power or this total intensity is proportional to, to it's uh, proportional to the fourth power of the temperature and in fact it's only a function of the temperature and this is uh, what is also called as uh, Stephen uh, Boltzmann uh, law and another thing that we see in this uh, spectrum is that as we increase the temperature the wavelength the wavelength at which this uh, peak of this intensity is occurring it actually decreases so as we are increasing the temperature the wavelength at which this maximum is occurring this maximum is occurring is uh, decreasing and uh, this is in fact can also be expressed uh, analytically and often it's uh, expressed at this maximum wavelength it's essentially given by as a function of temperature just by this simple relationship where this is uh, inversely proportional to the temperature of our uh, of our black body and this is also known as Wien's uh, displacement law and uh, this can again be derived by taking a derivative of this uh, derivative of this equation as a function of uh, uh, wavelength over here and then equating it to zero and that would give you essentially a maximum wavelength which depends upon which depends upon the temperature so these are you know some features of uh, features of this uh, black body radiation